Yo, what up? This is D-Night, and you're listening to the Pardon the Interaction podcast. My, oh, my, we've had so much going on. Uh, for starters, in case you missed it, we've got a new addition to the Par and Pie family, Tara Dublin. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter at Tara Dublin Rocks. Also, pick up a copy of her book while you're at it. Make, make her day, The Sound of Settling. A very fun and interesting read compared to the things we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, we're heading toward the do or die time for the 2024 election. Go ahead and hit up JoeBiden.com. Get that man like a dollar a month or something. Help his campaign staff up and get prepared to try and save our democracy. And make sure to grab like one other person you know and tell them about the podcast. Make sure they subscribe and tune in every single week. We got a lot of things coming up for you this year. We need all the support that we can get. So if you do your part and help us grow our audience, we'll do our part and help elect Joe Biden in 2024 and save American democracy. And this is the Part of the Interaction Podcast. <laughs> John Irving. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's in here. Um and No, then... I was that's my not the author, John Irving. I love John Irving. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh, we're gonna talk about John Irving today. <laughs> uh <laughs> no. He's got a new book out. Evan got it for me for Mother's or my birthday or some, oh. sometime. That's I'm very going sweet. To, someday I'll read it. Because I can read still. <laughs> can you i find it difficult because i don't have the time well and i'm you know i'm working i got personal shit yeah um uh, twitter i do that all day um and you know these i try and figure out what the fuck we're gonna do on the podcast every week <laughs> which is it's not difficult it, other than the fact that so much news breaks that like I'll have things in mind, but the closer we get to the day of whenever we record, whatever day that happens to be, more right. news breaks. And then I'm like, all right, we'll bump that thing, insert new, I, new, yeah. So I, and I kind of have to wait until we're almost ready to record it. And then editing this thing is, it's not mm-hmm. super time consuming, but it does take, I mean, it's basically minute for minute. I have to I listen to the whole thing as I edit it. Surely you have enough fans on Twitter that you could, you know, tell them, get someone to edit it for free for the privilege of getting to hear all of the. Nah, I wouldn't do that. Um, I, and I, I mean, I, I like editing it. It's not, okay. it's not a chore. <laughs> I, it's, I actually enjoy it. Yeah. Anyway, Ooh. we got to do this real quick. Um, so a, a really quick fuck Mary Kill, Donald Trump, Rudy <laughs> Giuliani. <laughs> Ah! Stuart Rhodes, go. Uh, 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 okay. I'm going to marry Stuart Rhodes because he's going to be in prison and I won't have to fuck him. Uh, shit. I mean, having heard what I heard about Rudy and the, and the Viagra, I'm going to, I'm going to kill him and I guess fuck Trump because it'll only last like a second. Oh, and maybe... I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> Which one would you? I mean, I think okay. you had the right idea, I'm going Carol. To fuck Stuart, because that's Whoa. your that's your oh, friend's no, no, no. ex. That's fucked I'm, up. I, I, <laughs> I'm from El Paso, man. We're all Eskimo sisters here. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, you're absolutely so, correct. There, I'm gonna fuck Stuart. I am going to kill Trump and I'm going to marry Giuliani because I can get him really, really drunk. And I have some experience with getting them to go to sleep. Okay. I'm going to marry <laughs> Trump so I can divorce him <laughs> and take half of the money that he got from the Saudis. Um, I'm going to kill Rudy Giuliani because no one should ever touch that. And I'm going to fuck Stuart Rose because I can just stick it in this eye socket. This is the worst fuck Mary Kill ever. Uh. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Hey, this is D Knight. This is Carol. This is Ty. You're listening to the Part of the Insurrection Podcast, the podcast that confuses Republicans because they think we intend that to be literal. No, <laughs> it is intended to be irony, and you motherfuckers are crazy. Wait, do we have some Republican fans? <laughs> I got a pink. Is it Ben Shapiro? It's Ben Shapiro, isn't it? Uh, 
I'm pretty sure Ben Shapiro would hate this podcast, mostly because there's black people and women on it. Mm-hmm. You know, two things that he's probably not fond of and, you know, less. Well, I'm sure his wife is, is very fond of black people and, and possibly women. Well, that might be why she married him. I don't know. But I, yes. Um, I didn't have follow up material on Ben Shapiro. Dry oh, no. <laughs> uh, have you noticed there's a lot of small dick energy going around in the Republican Party right now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also like seeing them just like fighting against each other. Like, was it like Laura Loomer hanging out with like far left protesters because um, they also, I don't know, they also, uh, don't like DeSantis and she's trying to sabotage DeSantis <laughs> thinking anyone takes her seriously enough to like, anyway, though I, mean, I did that... see her interviewing some blacks for Trump and their reasons oh. seem to be mostly. Uh... Well, I always love when the Republican party is imploding and I'm sure that will just be quickly escalated uh, come the 2024 GOP primary. Anyway, uh, let's get to the crazy ass insanity of the news cycle here since we last were with you listeners first off bill gates was being blackmailed by jeffrey epstein that was fucking bonkers Uh, read up on that story just just go ahead and get out the old-fashioned google machine pull that up uh e jean carroll is seeking even more money and damages from trump's continuing defamation of her which was um, totally around and find out (laughs) that was totally expected you know, you lose a defamation suit. Did you, say, you, you, did you say tuck around? No. Oh, because that made me fuck, think fuck of tuck around. around. Uh, tuck around no, and find no. out. That's, I'm sorry. Okay. Tucking is banned you, on this podcast, just like Fox <laughs> News. Um, yeah, it's insane that he like lost a defamation suit and like hours later was on TV repeating the same things that cost him $5 million. That is the definite, isn't that, you know, he's following the literal definition of insanity. Yeah, trying the same thing multiple times and expecting different results. That's not really the definition, but yeah, I don't think he was expecting different results. I think he just he doesn't have the wherewithal to. I don't know. I mean, I hope you know the extra five, ten, fifteen million dollars he's about to lose was worth it. Uh, It wasn't worth it to CNN. Their ratings are worse than Newsmax at this point. Good. (laughs) <laughs> because they're never gonna bring over far left people i mean far uh, right people yeah well they're not gonna bring over far left people at this point since they're making well, yeah a, that's a why i was saying like they were it. never gonna attract that audience they, they will never have credibility mm-hmm. with a conservative audience and now and not with it a- to nobody like the to you know like they're literally pandering to yeah no one no one is looking for what they're selling uh the manhattan da Alvin Bragg is weighing new criminal charges against Trump CFO Alan Weisselberg. They might send his ass back to prison <laughs> if he doesn't fucking agree to cooperate. I mean, they should have just sent his ass to prison for longer than six months in the first place. Jack Teixeira is being held in pretrial detention in his espionage case. You can pull up the Google machine as for reasons to why that is the case. He is a danger to society, apparently. Gun fetishist. Uh, future mass shooter, if not for going to prison for the next 20 years. The Supreme Court, they took on the powers of the legislative branch, apparently, because they want to do twice the work for half the pay. Well, I mean, I guess twice the work for millions of dollars in pay under the table by right wing billionaires uh, by gutting the Clean Water Act for reasons. Uh, That was insane. What reasons? Oh. Yeah, they're just reasons, vibes, you know. Just uh, vibes. Yeah, they just, wow. just just on on vibes. Uh, apparently, when Trump was president, his Department of Justice investigated the Clinton Foundation until literally the final days of his administration. So years and oh, years. Oh, gee, and we're and the um, I'm sure those arrests are imminent, right? Because they. <laughs> It's funny you say that, Carol, because they came up with nothing, as they always do. I just can't wait to hear how they justify, you know, how they're like, well, like, it was Biden's administration. Look over there. Hunter Biden's laptop did it. I mean, it's it's wild because John Durham wrote that entire report saying the Russia 
the implications of the Durham report is that it's stupid. But what he was trying to say about the Russia investigation and its predication was that it should have been based on more solid evidence. Well, there was absolutely no evidence whatsoever to have opened an investigation into the Clinton Foundation. So the irony. Leaked text messages link Ron DeSantis with Lev Parnas, who was indicted for funneling Russian money into GOP political campaigns. Yeah, that's a, that's a doozy. Wonder how his campaign will face investigative scrutiny in the future. Fonnie Willis has narrowed the time frame for indicting Trump to mid-August. Huh? Yep. Mark your calendars, kids. I don't have much going on in August, so. <laughs> you know that much in advance, Carol? I mean. If it's what you say, I love it, especially late in the summer. My July looks very busy, honestly, so I do. <laughs> Well, we have something to look forward to in case some somehow magically the news is boring in August of this year. Stuart Rhodes receives an 18 year prison sentence after being found guilty of seditious conspiracy. Cons of fucking princes. Uh, not long enough, not nearly long enough, considering, I mean, you know, how often, first of all, do we have guilt, uh, seditious conspiracy guilty verdicts? And then just considering the nature of that fucking crime, I, I would say second only to treason, uh, betraying the country in a time of war. And to only get 18 years, it feels, I mean, I won't say it's a slap on the wrist because that's a lot of fucking time. He's probably going to die in jail. Thank God. But uh, we could have went with 25. It wouldn't have hurt. Yeah. But what would you say about like, he's not the top of the conspiracy. What, what? If he's getting 18 years, what would the guy on the top of the conspiracy be getting? That's a good point. I hope he gets forever. I mean, whatever he gets will be a life sentence for him. <laughs> well, considering he's in his late 70s, I'm fairly sure any prison sentence of any amount of time will be a, uh, a life sentence for him. You're, you're correct in that. Oh, um, that's what I meant. Yeah, in, case, in case you're wondering, we're talking about Donald Trump. Um, also, with the help of Elon Musk, Ron DeSantis had the least successful rollout of a presidential campaign in history with a rapidly unscheduled disaster <laughs> on, on the Twitter. Um, uh, yeah, that thing I imploded. Love that you love that for him? <laughs> I love that for him. Where are you? I know, it's dark. I know, because I'm, I'm laying down. <laughs> Okay, we got like 10 minutes of Ty left. Go, go, go. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Ty, I just thought you might want to like make fun of Ron DeSantis. That's your kink, right? <laughs> Did you see what I posted with my my um, albondigas meatball soup? Hey, you know, this is my meatball soup, or as we like to call it, Ron Baldigas. <laughs> <laughs> that would make me want it less, though. I, you, you lost oh, yeah, me, at Ron. <laughs> It makes you want meatballs a lot less. And somebody does somebody had comment and they're like, I don't know about I've had a bondigas. What are Ron Paul's? <laughs> We've just taken like the idea of putting anything remotely <laughs> representing Ron DeSantis into my mouth just makes me uh, uh, so. I'm, I'm glad we you know what I, next week he's gonna be on fuck mary q um no. No. <laughs> <laughs> and can i trade him out for his wife i can't even <laughs> deal with that option him and that crazy uh, uh, okay. i mean she also she seems like she's like lady macbeth over there right um i don't but, really how do i ask this in a not inappropriate um, I'm you probably man. can't so just ask yeah is do you think his wife is hot i mean not really but more attractive than i find him yeah yeah well literally everyone is more attra I, I would choose Ooh, you know what i don't know i don't know if i would choose rudy Giuliani. like she he seems like he would be a fucking dud in bed and she seems like a domineering bitch and at least that would be different you know Oh, Ty, you know how we feel about those kinds of relationships. She's just not my, she's just not my type, but I also, I know that there's something seriously fucking wrong with her. Both of them. I'm pretty sure. 
killed somebody at some time. And she's evil. Look at her. They're made for each other. She gives me that vibe that she killed somebody because there is literally no information about her before she worked at the golf network. And Casey isn't even her fucking name. So is she just Russian? She looks Russian. She looks exactly yeah, like the know? like the head of the Russia Today. Is that what RT stands for? Yes. Yeah. The Russia you Today. She might be. Because when they talk about her cancer thing, like when Ed Krasenstein was doing his, like, I'm an Elon Stan posturing. And he said something about, okay, oh, don't, don't attack the family, whatever our political differences are. Oh, God, he drives me fucking nuts with that. But I'm like, you know what? Those three months she had cancer, she didn't lose her eyebrows. She didn't lose her hair. She just disappeared. She was at the quote unquote spa, as in Veep, when Selena Meyer would have her meltdown and go to the spa for like two or three months. I'm pretty sure that's where Casey is. And when we don't see her, I think that's where she is at the spa. We can't really see you with the air quotes, but I can oh, sense I'm that you're good. doing them. I was doing, yeah, I was doing. Yeah, that. wherever Ty is, it's, <laughs> it's extremely no, those, dark. Or There's like no light. Bunny ears and I saw bunny. some waving around. <laughs> yeah, and she's like holding up her fingers, doing the 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 quotes thing, but it's difficult to make it. It's out. dark, um, and they're not. I mean, I don't necessarily show. doubt that she had cancer, but yeah. There are like cryo caps that I write about. You could put them on and they keep your head really cold while you get chemo. Um, so supposedly it won't, you won't lose your hair or lose less hair. Cause it, I, I don't know. I forget. Really? Yeah. Keeps it no from. In the, into that. Um, yeah. She's a very strange individual. Um, they're both very strange. It's very weird. They got married at Disney world. And now like Ron DeSantis is single-handedly trying to destroy Disney and is losing. He probably got in a fight with someone at the wedding and was like, you'll see, you'll all see (laughs) one day, one day you're all gonna see. Yeah. Yeah. Like, (laughs) Oh man. Uh, you know, look, not that I can't shame, but like if there were ever, if there was ever a cuck couple, um, They'd be number two, uh, right behind um, Ben Shapiro. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, just as you can tell, it's been a wild week, wacky news cycle. Like, yeah, and we skipped last week, so because <laughs> of me and my actions. But I didn't continue. skip last week. I was there for you guys, but I let the girls have the week off because they fucking earned it. They deserve it. Uh, they do too oh, much. Oh, thank you for letting me have the week off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't cut my pay. <laughs> well, Carol, I have to be honest with you. Like, if I were to cut your pay uh, any further than it already is. I'd owe is, you money. You, you'd be... <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, what's less than zero, Carol? Um, not that you're not worth all the money in the world. I just don't have any. Um, when or, people go below zero on Jeopardy, do they have to pay back? I'm sure they don't, but like, <laughs> oh, okay. On that note, Carol. So oh, no. when Ben, when Ben Best was, was that. still alive and we were working on things. So I had an idea for a screenplay. Cause I always like wonder when people go on like family feud, and that person, that one person in the family that gives like the stupidest fucking answers and loses it for everybody. Like, what's their life like when they go back home? <laughs> like the guy that fucking ruined it. Like my mom and my aunt and my cousins, they actually auditioned for Family Feud. It's Steve Harvey came to Charlotte. And it was some question that was so mundane. And my cousin Anthony answered something. And they literally all looked at him like, what the fuck? Like, did you just say they cut that part out? But I always think, I go, well, who, what happens to that guy when he goes back to his small town that he fucked up um, family feud? Like, he fucked up his family, like, winning. And so it was just like this, my name is Earl type of comedy that I wrote. Of this guy like going back home and having to like people are like throwing can loser like every time he goes somewhere or whatever. So that was just sidebar. 
That was one of my creative. <laughs> oh, you thought way farther into Jeopardy and the and Family Feud than I did. <laughs> That's me as a writer. I think it's like, oh, what does that guy have to do with when he goes home? So I, <laughs> I know it's probably too much in-depth thought but that's that's where we are that's where i am on to rufi giuliani we didn't get to cover this last week because i was saving this for you two um so rudy giuliani is being sued by i guess what you can call one of his former employees even though he was doing his best not to pay her um there were some wacky insane bonkers revelations from that suit we'll go down a list of a number of them starting with the fact that I believe her na- name is Miss. Is it Duffy? She's she yeah, revealed, yeah. She revealed in in her civil suit against Giuliani that Trump and Giuliani had partnered together to sell two million dollar pardons, splitting it fifty fifty with Trump. Uh, yeah, we forgot about that. Quick, that got erased from the from the news headlines uh, very quickly. Uh, which is also ironic because I feel like the Department of Justice was investigating a pay for pardon scheme uh, in 2021. You know, again, um, a number of individuals in and outside of the government were were asking Trump for pardons on his way out. Um, and this seems to back that up. Yikes. I like where this is going. Um, she also has information uh, suggesting that. They that Rudy Giuliani in advance of the 2020 election had already had already planned that if Trump were to lose, that they would claim there was massive voter fraud. So, I mean, that's exactly what happened. Trump lost and they immediately claimed a massive voter fraud. It's like, a, I don't know, a conspiracy or something. He also forced uh, this is where it gets kind of gross. Warning you in advance. Trigger warning, sexual assault. All right. If if you. Yeah, if you haven't cut the podcast off yet, here we go. It it, it gets very disturbing at this point. Um, he forced Miss Duffy into performing oral sex and intercourse. Oh, yeah, you know that is so gross. And I like old men, but that this is just too much. Uh, like former president, like lawyer, <laughs> you like old men, but that's too much. <laughs> way to way to take something so dark and and twist it into something funny. Uh, that that uh, I, I hate to laugh because sexual. Oh, she's assault. so gross. I, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading. I'm still reading it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he he also demanded oral sex while on the phone from Miss Duffy because he wanted to feel like Bill Clinton. Oh. Uh. Well, first of all, yeah. if you want to feel like. Bill Clinton, you could like at least, I don't know, try and be charming and then, you know, have the blowjobs be consensual. Yeah. And not like demand your employee do it or, it, you know, at the threat of being fired. I I, I, I don't know. I, not, not, look. Not that he doesn't have his other accusations of non consent. Anyway. No, that, yeah, look, I, I look, we, the, the podcast is not long enough for that. Um, yeah. Blowjobs <laughs> should be consensual and so should sex. And if you're someone's boss, you probably shouldn't be using your the authority of your role in that dynamic to coerce, coerce sex. I mean, I feel like at th- that point, it's not even se- – it's just – anyway. Um, he also role-played with her during sexual activities, suggesting that she behave as though she were his ew, daughter. Ew, 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 ew. Yeah, that was – that was pretty fucking creepy there. Um, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's funny because, of course, you know, the right the right wing is always accusing people of being pedophiles. And here's your former America's mayor wanting to role play with an employee that she was his daughter. I, I, I don't know if that means he wants to have sex with his daughter, but. Oh, dear. Probably. There's a lot. We can't. You don't have time to get into that either. Yeah, I don't want to get into the psychosexual analyzation of Rudy Giuliani's kinks. And um, his estranged daughter who probably won't talk to him. Yeah. Uh, well, he did marry his cousin, so like, it's not like, you know, banging his daughter would be far off. Uh, uh, Carol, you're so sweet. <laughs> grilled cheese. Oh, so yeah, that grilled cheese. Grilled yeah. cheese in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, that's the inside. No one knows what we're talking about. Um, uh, he also, <laughs> uh, it also appears uh, that Giuliani had an anti-Semitic streak, saying that, um, Carol, I don't. Expect he you. said that Jewish men have are are poorly you endowed, which I am gonna say I've never I've not found that to be true, but I've. I have no insight into that one way or another. I, I had some really great fucking sex with my space laser, so I don't know what the hell. Oh yeah, about. Ty, I forgot you. You <laughs> love this the space laser community. Exactly. Uh, they so, were blasting like, it all up in you, so I guess you know <laughs> you, Julie Hardy must be <laughs> totally mistaken. An <laughs> accusation. He also. <laughs> he also okay he said jewish people should get over passover because it was like three thousand years ago (laughs) oh my god you need to laugh at that this is not funny no i'm it's just funny to me because i'm picturing like his rambling incoherence and how he's just like he's like the penguin (laughs) when it was danny devito like, and also his- get over the Passover, like, bro, for real. <laughs> like, what? What are we? What are we doing? The Passover. Get over the Passover because it only happened once. And Charlton Heston, you know what he did? Like, what the fuck? Is he Egyptian or something? It's uh, like, well, I, you know, what? look, I I don't know how to go. I'm sure he's probably no. like secretly telling people black people should get over slavery too so i you know True. i just i mean it, look if if you have an entire race of people celebrating being freed from slavery i don't think you should ever get over that you should always anyway i don't know what the fuck his problem is that was some weird crazy shit um he also says that black and hispanic men hit women because it's quote in their culture uh, that was pretty fucking gross, especially as if like white men don't hit women. I don't even understand the implication there. Exactly. Right. Like, do we not remember Brad fucking Pascal who fucking put hands on his wife and police tackled him down Florida style? Like him all hopped up on Budweiser, not Bud Light, because that beer's apparently gay, but the other one. Um. Corey Lewandowski too like he grabbed that reporter and there was all that like scandal with him uh I actually don't even remember that (laughs) okay that's that's quite insane that there's been so many um stories of domestic abuse that I can't really figure out who was who or Trump, who was alleged to have assaulted his wife. Uh, right. But yeah, there was a specific thing about Porter and he shouldn't have gotten a security clearance because he had the domestic violence thing on his record. And that was just like, that was one of the scandals we never got any answers on. I mean, it was just fucking wild. And then, there, look, man, there's too much going on in the fucking Trump White House. Like, I can't remember it all. It was, uh, you, you listen to this podcast listen to the shit we talk about every week how is anyone supposed to keep up with all of this it's it's, it's bananas um yeah so after <laughs> beyond that uh, apparently rudy takes viagra constantly uh you know he takes it like vitamins or something his impotence is god's will <laughs> uh, i look that is one thing we should do like Pass a national ban on Viagra to fuck with people in red states. That'll show him. Uh, apparently, he also fantasized about bondage and sadomasochism after watching the show Billions. <sighs> if any of you are familiar with the show Billions, there's a very interesting dynamic between Paul Giamatti's character. What the fuck is his name? I've never watched that show. (laughs) Okay. Well, you know, look, uh, you can read about the oral history of (laughs) billions. I'm sorry. They're pun intended, but uh, yeah, to see what kind of interesting things Rudy Giuliani was fantasizing about after that, uh, which he wanted to uh, reenact with his quote unquote employee. He also called her, 
the B word and the C word, as well as Rudy Slut during sex. Uh, 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 just having sex with Rudy. Yeah, oh my God. I'm never going to get another erection. He was also drunk all the time, which I mean, feels like par for the course. We've had numerous stories of Rudy's endless um, day drinking and butt dialing. He likes to mix the two. Um, instead of like alcohol and drugs, he likes to mix alcohol with butt dialing. And he was also asking his employee for alcohol as early as 10 a.m. Um, so he, he got started. It's, you know, it's five, five o'clock somewhere. And among other things, he asked her to quote one time, fetch his alcohol and make sure he was a quote functioning alcoholic. So yeah, he wasn't. <laughs> he was always seen like he was fucking drunk it was never like oh he's totally pulling it off like didn't you always think like this guy's drunk what the fuck all righty um no? all right so we're gonna move on from this gross subject of and go uh, on for- yeah i just never want to think about anyone Ru- i never want to think about rudy giuliani having sex ever again just like Carol, please cleanse my palate of that horrifying mental imagery. Just like, oh, man. Sunshine, lollipops. It is quite wild how that story kind of just blew over. No one talks about that anymore. It was a week ago. It was last week. Yeah, I mean, because we're at overload. I've been at overload of information and bad news and shit, shit situations for like three years. Four Six years. Years. Seven years. I guess I wasn't paying attention then. <laughs> would also, I'm sorry, this is this is getting very graphic. Would point to his erect penis. Oh, it's so bad. It's so gross. Um, Ty, how you feel about this one? He would point to his erect penis after taking Viagra and tell her he couldn't work until she took care of it. Ugh. Well, Ty's, Ty's sleeping peacefully in her sheets and giggles. Colin, thank you so much for the sheets. They are fucking awesome. And I'm just blowing smoke up your ass. They are awesome. Wait, you like them too? Because I got to, I, look, I have to admit this. I don't usually splurge on sheets. They're nice. So maybe like my taste, you know, aren't well developed in the bed category, bedding category. At least, you know, Anyway, that could go a number of different directions. But as far as the things that make your bed comfortable at night, I must admit, these sheets are pretty fucking amazing. And I'm not saying that just because he gave them to us for free. <laughs> They're actually really good. <laughs> They're really comfortable. Yeah. They are. And I am like, I get really, really warm at night. And those sheets keep me cool, which is great because yeah. I don't have fucking air conditioning. I'm so, gonna- <laughs> <I'm> not- <laughs> so having that, like, it's it's... It feels so good. They are so cozy and I have insomnia. So laying in those sheets, I'm able to like really relax and I love it. Thank you, Colin. Yeah. It's like wrapping yourself in love. Um, yes. All right. Yeah. All right, kids, buy, pick up a set of sheets and you can have a wonderful evening of peaceful, relaxing, comforting sleep. I also like them. Yeah. Thank you. Sheets and giggles. 